The Board of County Commissioners acts as a quasi-judicial body when it hears requests for rezonings and conditional use permits. Applicants must provide competent, substantial evidence establishing facts or expert witness opinion testimony showing that the request meets the zoning code and comprehensive plan criteria. Opponents must also testify as to facts or provide expert testimony whether they like or dislike a request is not competent evidence. The board must then decide whether the evidence demonstrates consistency and compatibility with the comprehensive plan and the existing rules in the zoning ordinance, property adjacent to the property to be rezoned, and the actual development of the surrounding area. The board cannot consider speculation, non-expert opinion testimony, or poll the audience by asking those in favor or opposed to stand up or raise their hands. If a commissioner has had communications regarding a rezoning or conditional use permit request before the board, the commissioner must disclose the subject of the communication and the identity of the person, group, or entity with whom the communication took place before the board takes action on the request. Likewise, if a commissioner has made a site visit, inspection, or investigation, the commissioner must disclose that fact before the board takes action on the request. Each applicant is allowed a total of 15 minutes to present their request, unless the time is extended by majority vote of the board. The applicant may reserve any portion of the 15 minutes for rebuttal. Other speakers are allowed five minutes to speak. Speakers may not pass their time to someone else in order to give that person more time to speak. Welcome to one and... Yeah, we're on. Welcome to one and all. It's uh, May 4th, 2017, and this is our zoning board meeting, and we'll call it to order now, and we'll have our invocation by Pastor Dr. Vernon Clay. Would you like to introduce him? Yeah, Pastor Clay, it's such a, come on up. It's such an honor to have you here tonight on National Day of Prayer. I'm, I'm sure you've been doing some praying today, and I, I thank you that you're going to pray over us tonight and uh, get us ready to go for this evening. Well, thank you. And if you'd like to say anything about your church, you're more than welcome to do that also. Well, thank you. I uh, have the privilege and great blessing to pastor a small church in uh, Titusville in the northern part of the county with some of the greatest people, uh, along with our other fellow residents in this part. We also uh, are trying to begin to look at how we can help at-risk youth in various populations and one of the visions that I've been working on is an after-school ministry not a daycare after-school ministry uh, because there's a different licensure uh, where we take in children there's still a lot of at-risk youth as you know and there's still a lot of latchkey kids kids going home so for safety reasons for uh, moral reasons and to better our community with our kids. We got to get our hands on them. I'm a substitute teacher also. I teach at uh, Madison and uh, Jackson Middle School. So I've been in the, uh, with the Board of Education for some time since we came here from Washington, uh, D.C. in 2008. So thank you for that opportunity as we pursue this after school ministry. If you know that there are any special licensing uh, that the insurances require when you pick kids up from the school as a church I need to know about that because that's kind of where we are and uh, I don't need any pushback from it but if there is a provision I need to know and you are the legal minds so please let me know if there's some special uh, insurance that we need to pick kids up from the school because we pick them up every Sunday and uh, we're doing the same thing on Sundays as we do for Vacation Bible School. So thank you, Commissioner Pritchard. With that being said, Mr. Chairman, let us pray. Please stand. Oh, gracious God, you have given us this day to stand together as one another and with each other, united in the blood that was shed for us all. So as we come today, God, we thank you for bringing us together as your people. We pray a special blessing on the first responders, those who put themselves in harm's way to protect, to serve, and to lead and guide. We thank you, God, for this county commission. 
We thank you, God, for the district representative now that you have chosen. And we pray for her, our sister, our commissioner, Rita Pritchard. And we ask a special blessing upon each county commissioner and our friends and neighbors who will speak tonight. Help us to be fair and just as we employ your will according to each resident because we are all equal and we shall overcome. We have overcome. We thank you for our governor. We pray for our president of the United States and all who serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Please join me in our pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have two resolutions this evening, and I believe they're both from District 2. Commissioner Barfield, would you like to yes. present those? Uh, the first one is a resolution proclaiming May the 8th as Child Welfare Professionals Recognition Day. I'd like to ask Mr. Bill Boucher to come forward. Did I say that right? Yeah, Booker. Booker, okay. I'll uh, read the resolution and then you can tell us a little bit about your organization and, and uh, anything else you want to. Thank you. Whereas children are Florida's most precious resource and our promise for a bright future, and whereas Florida's child welfare professionals are responsible for ensuring that our children live free from maltreatment, enjoy long-term secure relationships within strong families and communities, are physically and emotionally healthy and socially competent, and whereas Florida's child welfare professionals work to ensure that families nurture, protect, and meet the needs of their children and are well integrated into their communities. And whereas Florida's child welfare professionals build rapport and trust with families, empower family members, connect resources, and propose solutions, and demonstrate respect for families in their social network and community and culture. And Whereas Florida's child welfare professionals form partnerships with family members, partner and share information, and facilitate partnerships to achieve optimum communication, clear roles and responsibilities, and mutual accountability while including parents and other caregivers in decision making. And whereas the Together in Partnership Advisory Board, along with the Brevard County Board of County Commissioners, wishes to thank all the child welfare professionals for a job well done advocating and serving our at-risk children. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, does hereby proclaim May 8, 2017, as Child Welfare Professional Recognition Day, done, ordered, and adopted in regular session this fourth day of May, A.D. 2017. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve this resolution. We have a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Anyone wish to vote no? Pass is 4-0. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of Brevard Family Partnership, the community-based care agency charged with protection of children in Brevard County, and Family Allies, our new um, case management organization that we have created to bring 100% focus on Brevard's uh, families and children, thank you for recognizing the hard work that child welfare prof professionals do every single day. We have about 997 children that are under our supervision uh, with about 50 case management staff, including support from family support workers, supervisors, administrative assistants, and leadership between case management and uh, community-based care organizations. So thank you for the recognition, and uh, we'll be sure to share that with staff. Congratulations. Thank you.
Okay, the next one is uh, recognizing Nita Harris and her contributions to tourism of Florida's Space Coast. And this is a very special woman, and she cannot be with us today, but she has a number of representatives here. So what I'll do is uh, go ahead and read the resolution and get y'all's comments after that, okay? Whereas Nita Harris has provided leadership as the executive director of the Brevard Nature Alliance and the Space Coast Birding and Wildfire, Wildfire Wildlife Festival since 1999. And whereas Nita Harris has contributed significantly to this Space Coast event, becoming one of the premier birding festivals in the world. And whereas Nita Harris is known statewide by the tourism industry for her generous spirit as she shared ideas, experiences, and knowledge with others to nurture and mentor. And whereas Anita Harris is an advocate for the promotion, protection, and use of our unique coastal resources in a responsible manner. Whereas Anita Harris has contributed a considerable amount of her time and energy promoting the Space Coast as an excellent destination for birding, cultural, and nature-based tourism activities. And whereas Anita Harris has served on advisory boards for the Brevard County Parks and Recreation Department to ensure safe and accessible recreation for Space Coast residents. And whereas the influence of Nita Harris has benefited our community as well as the growing number of national and international tourists seeking to experience the extraordinary wildlife that thrives at our nation's historic gateway to space. Now, therefore be it resolved that the Brevard County Tourist Development Council and the Brevard County Commission recognize Nita Harris for her outstanding contributions in preserving and respecting our natural and cultural heritage and promoting the ecotourism assets of Florida's Space Coast. Done, ordered, and adopted in regular session this fourth day of May, AD 2017. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we accept this resolution. We have a motion on the floor. Do we have a second? A second. We have a second. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4-0. Congratulations. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Bart Getchens, and I am the proud chairman of the Brevard Nature Alliance, and I'm joined by Keith Winston, the executive director at the zoo, Laura Lee Thompson, who is involved in so many activities, we'd take up the entire meeting if I told you about them, <laughs> and of course, Eric Garvey. Uh, we want to thank you very much for, what, for recognizing Nita. As you may know, Nita is dealing with a health issue, so she could not be here tonight but I know she will be facing this health issue as she has done with everything she's faced with dignity, class, and courage. And I know she would want me to read to you the mission of the Brevard, Brevard Nature Alliance. And if I may, if this will come up, the mission of the Brevard Nature Alliance is to build public awareness and appreciation of the value of Brevard County's natural resources by fostering and promoting ethical nature-based ecotourism. And that pretty well describes Nita. When you look at all the wonderful things she's done, the events she goes to, and how she promotes not only our ecotourism, but Brevard County. She has just been a tremendous asset to this county, along with what she's done for the Space Coast Wildlife and Birding Festival how many people come into this county, the economic impact, how many people have come and stayed in our hotels, the image to the county, it's just been fantastic. So on behalf of the Brevard Nature Alliance Board of Directors, I'd like to thank you and I, I will ask if any of my colleagues would like to say any words. I guess I've known Nita the longest and uh, she came into my world 18 years ago as a volunteer for the birding festival and she ended up running it and uh, I can't I can't say how much she's done um, she took this little event that started out with 150 friends and relatives of mine that I shamed into coming and turned it into a world-class event that brings uh, thousands to our co our community and and that's just the tip of the iceberg for what she's done um, she served on the Parks and Rec b b uh, boards. Um, she's a stalwart member of the MIMS Methodist Church. Um, and er all kinds, you know, she does Meals on Wheels and all kinds of things for our community. And so um, I know that she would love to be here tonight, and she would be here if she could. But thank you on her behalf for this fabulous recognition. Thank you.
Okay, we'll now move to item 4A1. Okay. Okay. Doesn't, it just doesn't seem quite loud enough tonight. Okay. <laughs> um, this first item um, was tabled from your April 6th Board of County Commissioners meeting. The applicant has been working on trying to uh, find better access for the property, and I believe he's here to request tabling. If you'd like to have him come up to the podium. Mr. Drawer, would you like to come to the podium, please? Uh, Noel Drort, uh, 580 North uh, Wickham, Melbourne, 32935. Uh, Mr. Chairman, board members, thank you for uh, considering tabling the item till the uh, August meeting. And the reason for the request is that I have opportunity to work with the neighbors and work at the better solution for the rezoning. Well, we obviously have no objection to you working with your neighbors. Are there any objections to this tabling? We need a motion for that. Yes. We do. And to move we it. We have a lot of comments. August third. Would be August third. Let me ask the attorney um, if we vote to table it. Uh, how do we work the comments? Does that keep it open or? No, if you move to table, then you will be closing the discussion. You have a choice. You can either act on the request to table and close the discussion and then hear it in August, or you can leave it open, take the comments, and then table, or you can take other action as you choose. Mr. Barfield, this is your district. Do you have uh, any thoughts on this matter? Well, we do have people here. Uh, I hate to not let them speak when they've come here to speak. But um, if, if we uh, do, I'd like to know if they still want to speak, if still, even if we're going to table. Anyone else have any thoughts? I, I would think if they still want to speak, no more table, that that would be appropriate for the people who came. Yeah. So. Okay, well, I'm going to throw a fly in that oil, and this is my opinion. My opinion is that if Mr. Drawer wants to work with these folks, comments that they make tonight may wind up being not essential. Mm -hmm. So... I would say, in the interest of saving you guys having to stay out past any particular time, if you want to say, okay, well, if you can, of course, that would be taken into consideration. But my point is that if he were to work with you folks and you came to some kind of an agreement that made you happy, then there would be no point in standing up and taking. Well, I live on Smith Road and I'm not okay. So, Mr. Barfield. Let's let Mr. McMillan speak. Okay. Well, anyone can speak. Yeah, anyone wants to speak. Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Dork, we'll, we'll, we'll address your uh, request after we listen to the, those that want to speak. Thank you. Okay, we have, uh, I'm going to go through these and you can say yes, you want to speak or you're willing to wait until August 3rd. Kim Smith? I'll wait until August 3rd. Okay, thank you. Michael Herkala? You, you wait to speak. Thank you, sir. Larry Rockliffe? Thank you, sir. Earl McKinnon? McMillan. McMillan, I'm sorry. Yes, I would like to speak. Okay. Jack Kirschenbaum. Now, I want to go through the list. I'll wait to speak. Okay, Jack, thank you. Bill Hilberg. Thank you, sir. Mary Huberg? Hilberg. Hilberg. Thank you, ma'am. Robert Scora. Thank you, sir. W. Purdue. Thank you, sir. John Shanson. Thank you. So we have um, two folks. Earl McMillan, would you like to step up and to the podium? Yeah, let's see if this will. I don't know how to work this thing. I think I just turned it off. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, my name is Earl McMillan. I live at 150 Smith Road, North Merritt Island. Uh, our property is two and a half acres. It's on the north side. Oh, there you go. 
There are seven residents on Smith Road going from uh, west to east. Tidwells don't live on their property. Uh, Duncan don't, does not live on the property. Matthews does not live on the property. And Schnabel does not live on the property. Uh, the two uh, properties, Armstrong and Blasky, are much larger than two and a half acres. It's just a little drawing I made of North Merritt Island, which I'm sure most of you are familiar with. It just has uh, one main north-south road that's Courtney, and then a branch. It's kind of like a tree that goes off Grant that runs north and south. Back in 2005, Mr. Drewer made these promises uh, to the county commission. He said, and these are from the minutes of the dependent special district, he wanted to make sure that the houses are not crammed in. He is trying to have a development that will be an asset to the community and he would like to limit it to 18 houses even though the zoning he requested would grant him uh, the right to do more houses. And everybody was for it. North Merritt Island homeowners, dependent special district, county commission, no one objected to it. March of this year, all the residents, seven residents, including me, went before the dependent special district and said, he wants to do what he said he's going to do back in 2005. No problem. To me, there has to be symmetry in zoning. I think the argument you're going to hear in August is, well, you gave it to Harvey Groves, which is a property north of his. You went from SEU to EU2. Therefore, you have to give it to me. Well, you could argue that his property is uh, compatible now with Harvey's Grove that goes to EU2, but it is not compatible with Smith Road, the abutting property. If he were here tonight to say, gee, I limited myself to 18 back in 2005, can I go to 24, 26, or whatever? No problem. If he wanted to say, oh, I said 3,000 square foot homes in 2005, now can I do 2,500 square foot homes? No problem. There are a lot of things could be adjusted. But to go to EU2, not a good idea. He has said uh, to the dependent special district that the reason nothing was done in the last 12 years was the recession. Well, that is a change. The economy has picked up. But there have been some changes on uh, Smith Road as well. The Rowles, who are on the little chart you have in front of you, uh, built their home about two years ago and uh, moved in on the south side. And Searoy just moved into their house a year ago. It's a $600,000 home. And the Jules, Armstrongs, McMillans, and Grebus, and Grebus is going to be the most heavily affected, he can't be here tonight, have all put a lot of money into their homes. When we started out, the seven residents were all on the same page. Do what you promised to do in 2005, you're golden. Now, there was an understanding that some would go to Mr. Drewer to feel, feel him out, to see what he really wanted. There was no negotiation to be done. And uh, my, I don't know where all the residents stand, but my wife and I feel this is bad for North Merritt Island, and we do not want to see 40 homes back there, which is what I'm understanding the negotiation is about. So I know I can't say everybody stand up, because <laughs> that's illegal. I had a bunch of people going to be here to wave their American flag, but I can't do it. So I'll thank you for your attention. If you have any questions, I have 42 seconds left. None. OK. Thank, thank you, Mr. McMillan. Mr. Kirschenbaum. I'll wait. You wait until August. Until August 3rd. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get tired of sitting there all that time. I need the exercise. <laughs> okay, so uh, pleasure of the board. Do we want to table this? Yeah, I make a motion. We table it till August 3rd. We have a motion to table. Second. I'll second. We have a second. Just, just second. Go ahead. And I also have to declare I've talked to Mr. Drawer, and um, I've also looked at the property. I don't know if I have to do that for table, but I did anyway. Okay. okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Barfield, a second by Commissioner Isnardi. 
Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4 0. It's tabled until August 3rd. Thank you. Commissioners, I would like to, uh, this, is, this only happens a few times a year, but I would like to take, uh, move the agenda, uh, the item C up, uh, due to it being the large scale comp plan amendment that we need, that you've seen for adoption, um, and now we're bringing it back to, I mean, for transmittal, and now we're bringing it back for adoption. And um, we need to hear the C agenda because the B agenda actually carries the companion zoning items. So we'll start with the C part of the agenda, and I'm going to let Aaron take care of four, that. Four C? No, we're, it's item C, public hearing adoption of the 2017 comprehensive plan package. Where's that at? That's our very last oh. thing. Okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Aaron Stark, Brevard County Planner. Um, we are bringing three items before you today, all um, brought forward by the private sector. Um, you saw these items for transmittal at, um, in uh, March 2nd at the Commission. We agreed to transmit these uh, comp plan amendments to the state, and um, we're here now to review the adoption and send that forward to the state again. Uh, 2017 1.1 is a proposal by uh, Florida Power and Light on 462 acres, uh, proposing to go from public conservation and residential one to public facilities. It's a proposal that would allow for the development of a uh, utilities production uh, and a solar farm. And they have a companion rezoning as well associated later on the agenda. Um, I can speak more to it, but there are several FPL uh, applicants here today. Uh, if you'd like to hear from Mel, he's in the audience. Uh, Mr. Getchens, Mr. Scott. Commissioners, we're just here for questions. If the commission has any, uh, FPNL has done an uh, extensive job in community outreach, uh, has been with the community on several occasions. Uh, have gone through the transmittal process. I've gotten no comments uh, from the review agency. So again, uh, in the interest of uh, time and out of respect for your evening, we're just here for questions. Thank you. Thank Pleasure you. of the board. So we have to do three separate amendments? Yes. I'll need you to make three a motion on this item alone, and then I'll brief you on the other two items okay. separately. I can make a motion that we accept uh, plan amendment 2017-1.1. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner Barfield. Do we have a second? We have a second. Second by Commissioner Pritchett. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4 0. Thank you. Uh, 2017 1.2 is a proposal by Granite Property Development on a little more than 48 acres, proposing to go from planned industrial and community commercial to residential four. Um, they have a companion rezoning also on your agenda later today. Um, this is a proposal that would eventually allow for development of up to four units per acre and a potential maximum of 193 single-family residences. Um, they, we sent this application to the state for transmittal and received no feedback from any of the 10 agencies that heard it. Um, so there is nothing we've had to address in between transmittal and adoption on behalf of uh, the applicant. Um, they have, uh, they're within the level of service standards for all parks, transportation, public schools, um, and, uh, and the applicants here, if you have any questions. Pleasure of the board. I move to approve it. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Pritchett. Second. We have a second by Commissioner Barfield. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4-0. Okay, and the third proposal of the large-scale comp plan amendments is 2017-1.3. Um, it's similar to the last one in that it is uh, a proposal on 130 acres going from industrial, neighborhood commercial, community commercial, and residential eight directive to residential four, all again allowing for 40 units to an acre. Um, that's a maximum of 521 single-family residences. 
Um, they also have, um, Cindy will speak to this later on the rezoning, the last application and this one both have uh, a testament in their rezoning to a BDP to provide water and sewer connectivity. So that's something that each applicant has individually agreed to. And then uh, I think their representative is here as well if you have any questions. Pleasure of the board. I move to move, I move to approve plan amendment 2017-1-3. Second. We have a motion to approve by Commissioner Pritchett. Motion, uh, motion to second is by Commissioner Isnardi. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4-0. Thank you. Thank you for taking that out of order. We're going to now go back to 4B1, Argo Iron Incorporated. Everybody switch their pagers over. This application is for a conditional use permit for heavy industry in an IU1 zoning classification on five and a half acres in the Rockledge area. Uh, they are already located in an industrial park. They already have the highest industrial zoning that we have. However, uh, our industrial zoning classifications refer to metal fabrication as something that requires an additional condition use permit for heavy industry, basically for public notification and input. I believe metal fabrication, iron sulfate are the type of products. I'll let you speak about your item. Mr. Uh, forgive me, I can't read your writing. N that's right. I apologize, I have terrible handwriting. Campbell. Evan, name? Evan Netzer, I'm president of Agro Iron Inc. Uh, our address is 201 uh, West Christina Boulevard, Suite 3 in Lakeland, Florida. Mr. Chairman and commissioners, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak uh, tonight in support of our application. Uh, Agro Iron Inc. is uh, composed of staff who have over 100 years of combined experience in uh, handling and um, uh, manufacturing chemicals. Um, this is for uh, chemical manufacturing use, thus the CUP application in the heavy industry zone. Uh, the request is for a CUP for heavy industry in an IU1 zoning classification at 5050 Corbin Avenue. Uh, this changes the prior use from a truss manufacturing uh, build, uh, manufacturing operation, which was shut down uh, after the global financial crisis. Uh, and to change it to warehousing and processing of chemical products. The property uh, has had industrial zoning since 1966. In 1977, the new IU-1 zone was changed. Uh, it is an industrial park uh, with industrial uses surrounding it, a junkyard, waste recycling, traffic control device manufacturing and warehousing, a lumberyard, and a scrapyard. Uh, it is on uh, is rail served property as well, so the uh, rail nature of the property uh, is also present. Um, we store and uh, manufacture iron sulfates and iron humate. We will bag this material, we'll ship it out in bulk, uh, we will liquefy it. These chemicals are used uh, and have been used for uh, decades in drinking water and wastewater purification. Uh, we are uh, both going to uh, work in those areas. Uh, they're also used as micronutrients uh, in farms. For example, ferrous sulfate is used by blueberry farmers to supplement iron uh, and to add acidic uh, material to the soil to help the blueberries grow. Uh, in addition, we are hoping to be successful bidders as the county proceeds uh, with the Indian River Lagoon cleanup. Uh, to provide our materials and process to help remove phosphorus from the uh, phosphorus uh, laden water in the lagoon and help clean up the uh, water there. Uh, we are very excited to invest in Brevard County. Uh, I'm here to answer any questions uh, you may have uh, and we respectfully request uh, after answering any questions approval of the rezoning and uh, I reserve the, remind, the remainder of my time as may be needed for any rebuttal. Pleasure of the board. This is your, your district. So. Yeah, I, I have no objection. Being the commissioner for District 4, I have no objection to this. Okay, and with that, and I make a motion that we go ahead and accept this. We have a motion by Commissioner Barfield. Any seconds? Second. 
We have a second by Commissioner Rosnardi. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4-0. Congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Item 4B2. This is a request for rezoning from GU to AU on 11.82 acres for the purposes of having a clear list of permitted uses in the AU zoning classification and possible subdivision of the property in the future. Uh, the existing GU classification is just a holding classification and the list of permitted uses is, is shorter than those of an AU. So it is the desire of the applicant to have a, a more detailed list of permitted uses on their property. Carl? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. Uh, Carl Bone. I'm an attorney. I represent Mr. and Mrs. Williams, 1311 Bedford Drive. Basically, as, as staff said, GU is, is the current zoning. They're requesting AU on 11.82 acres. Um, PNZ unanimously approved it. No objections from the, the residents around it. It's consistent with the comp plan, so without wasting any more time, I leave it into your hands. Thank you. Pleasure of the board. Um, before I make a motion, I just want to disclose that I met with Mr. and Mrs. Williams in my office and we talked about this property. It's pretty cut and dry, and obviously I would support it, so I'll make a motion to approve. Okay, we have a, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Zanardi, a second by Commissioner Barfield. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4-0. Congratulations. Item 4B3, uh, 2620 Highway 1 LLC. This is a request for rezoning from B1 to B2 on three, about three acres, just north of State Road 46 in MIMS. The Planning and Zoning Board recommended approval with the buying development plan uh, limiting some of the uses that he plans to have on the property. Um, those uses were business office, business units, uh, trailer truck boat storage. Uh, they wanted him to maintain a rear buffer and have no access to Folsom Road and that there would be no idling of engines and or generators after 10 p.m. Uh, working that BDP out with the applicant at the PNZ meeting, uh, the, the vote was unanimous with the BDP added to the motion. Um, I don't know if the applicant would like to get up and speak about what he plans to do. It's a vacant piece of property right now and he plans to have a couple of different uses. Mr. Barcher? Mr. Rice. Oh, Mr. Rice. Mr. Okay. Rice. Okay. I have Mr. Barcher also. Okay, Mr. Rice. Yes, uh, Woody Rice, uh, Epic Consultants, 505 Indian River Avenue, Titusville, Florida. And I am representing uh, uh, Jeff Green, uh, the owner of the property. Um, and as uh, your staff indicated, there were three conditions. However, uh, at the time, I did not object to the third condition, was the no idling after 10 p.m. I thought if it was a problem for my client, I could come back and address that today. Apparently, he does transport perishable items. So he would have to run generators in his trucks if they came in after hours. Uh, so I discussed that with him that, that next morning, we actually did a new concept plan I'd like to share with you tonight. Um, some of the things that, that we, we changed, as you notice, we took the truck parking area and shrunk it considerably, moving it closer to US-1 and away, away from the Folsom uh, area. Um, that It's over 300 feet away now instead of what it was showing on the original site plan. Um, Mr. Green um, is a second generation truck broker. Uh, John Green was his father and actually uh, Jeff's son is also involved in it. So he's, he's a long-term resident of North Brevard. His home's North Brevard. 
and uh, he, he, we do consider our, this our home and want to address those things. Mr. Green did meet with the MIMS community the next day after PNZ, showed him this new concept plan that we addressed. Um, they looked at it. They really didn't have any objections at, at that meeting at all about this, um, this site plan. So what we're asking for you to pass this tonight um, with removal of the one item. What we do agree with and what we have to do anyways is come in compliance with the noise ordinance um, by Burrard County standards, which is 55 dB at night from 10 to 7 a.m. And that's part of the reasons why we made some of these changes was to move that back so we could meet that, that ordinance. Some of the unique characteristics about this site is there is a large wetland there we're preserving. There are two smaller wetlands that we will be impacting. We do have an environmental scientist on board. Uh, the survey has, the wetland survey has been conducted and is actually being still being surveyed by our surveyor. Um, one of the other changes we made because we did hear from the men's community was that there was at one time some bays there for maintenance for these vehicles. We have since decided not to do that. The main reason was because Mr. Green looked at the cost of, of the employee, the cost of the facility, and decided it was cheaper for him in the long term to outsource that than to have it on a site. So in the, the top uh, part by US-1, we're changing that to warehouse with sort of storefronts that you would have um, in that zoning district. Um, what uh, we ask is Mr. Green couldn't be here tonight, and he just is asking for your support, and so am I. Um, if there's anything that, uh, any questions you may have, we'd be happy to try to answer those tonight. Commissioner Pritchett, you have the floor. Thank you, sir. Um, just to, I did talk to Mr. Rice earlier. Mm -hmm. I received an email from Commissioner, I mean, Robin Fisher, um, just um, stating he thought it was a good project. And I also spoke to Mr. and Mrs. Hale earlier this evening and received an email from them also. Mr. Rice, um, when I had an opportunity to talk to you, we went over these things because we, we were um, making sure that the residents weren't going to be affected too much. And um, something very interesting when we were having the conversation is you actually could do this on the property without rezoning, but the rezoning is making it more, it's making it possible to move the trucks out closer to the road instead of closer to Folsom. That's correct. The back part of this property, it's only the first 200 feet we're talking about tonight is the BU1. The back part is already BU2, which would allow the truck parking. So by granting this request, it does allow us to move that operation closer to US-1. Which, which I like because it's, it's right along the, the main highway. It's even a better fit there. And um, I, I think one other thing we're going to have to work on down the road, it's, it's not thing we can do tonight here, we'll have to look at it, is making sure we have good access for the trucks to get in and off the property. And that's just a US-1 problem right now, jamming up at 46. I don't know why I'm going there right now. But um, you had also mentioned that you're going to be doing a, a buffer, a tree buffer down Folsom. Yes, it's a 50 foot on the site plan and the original site plan and the site plan. There is a 50 foot uh, tree buffer that we're providing along Folsom, Folsom. And one of the things that we looked at in the original design is this is the rails to trail. There's a rails to trail behind right. this property and we felt it was important to be good community stewards and provided it a, a very adequate buffer in the back, not only for those homes, but for those, that, those people enjoying that rails to trail uh, ride. Right. So I, I just wanted to, you know, I, I know we still have some more cards, but I, I think that um, the way that we've designed this property now, moving the trucks closer to the road is, is, is really good. And this is a good fit for that property. And as long as we're taking care of the, the trails coming up, because that's very important to us and that you have the buffer and, and the noise problem. And I think with it being closer to the road, as long as we're sticking to the, um, the noise ordinance, I, I think we should be in pretty good shape with the tree buffer also in the neighborhood. So. I agree. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank I have you, a question. Um, yeah. I, know, I don't usually ask questions at this yes. point, but is it your intent that this concept plan be attached to the binding development plan for locational purposes of the improvements? What we don't want to do is, is because no hard engineering has been done. They're still surveying the property, so I don't have topographic information. I still have to meet with DOT with access points and things like this. This is a very preliminary concept plan. So we don't want to bind ourselves to a point that we can't adjust the site. But what we are saying is we will push the truck parking that 300 feet won't be any closer than that 300 feet. So we can put that verbally You can put in the that in there that the truck parking won't be any okay. closer than 300 feet. We have no objections to that. We just want to be able to shift the parking up there and the building some. 
Uh, can we also amend the, I'm over here. <laughs> can we also amend the bind development plan because you've now stipulated a 50 foot buffer in the rear towards the railroad tracks. Did I hear that right? Yeah, it was on the original site plan was that 50 foot. We just didn't put it in the BDP. Are you okay with putting the 50 yeah, foot? Yeah, we plan okay. on doing it. We have no problem with the 50 just foot. Just want to make there. sure. Thank you. Ron Barger. Thank you, Commissioners. Uh, Jeffrey Green did meet with our group. Would you give uh, us your name and I'm your address, sorry. please? I'm sorry. Ron Barcher. I'm president of the MEMS Community Group. Uh, my address is 3431 Grant Line Road in MEMS. Uh, Jeffrey Green did meet with us uh, after he met uh, at, went to the PNZ meeting. Uh, when we first became aware of the plan that he was doing, we had some strong objections to it, uh, primarily because it looked like it was going to be a truck repair center. Uh, our members said, we can't have that in the center of the heart of MEMS. So uh, after discussing, I, uh, I called up Mr. Green. He agreed to talk to me. Uh, he said he had changed his plans. I said, oh, okay. So after he changed his plans, uh, and then he came to our meeting showing us the revised plans, uh, we do not object to the, to the proposal. Uh, so I just want to let you know we're, we're supporting him. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Pleasure of the board. Move to approve. We have a motion to uh, approve. Uh, we have I have a question. Uh, to make the motion, we need to include as oh, approved yeah. with the BDP, limited to business units, trailer truck boat storage, maintenance, correct. rear buffer, no access to Fol Folsom Road. And do we, Cindy, do we have to also put in there that the truck parking will be up front and the BDP will have a 50 foot buffer? Yes, I believe that we need to add, it, so the way that reads business units, trailer trip storage, maintenance of a 50-foot rear buffer, no access to Folsom Road, and um, that the truck, we could change that last sentence to say that the truck, uh, trailer, and boat storage would be within the first X number of feet on the property. That would give us enough, I think, in the buying development plan. Yes, the applicant needs to come up and agree. That, that footage. Yeah, what I would recommend on the site plan is that we keep it at least a minimum of 300 feet away from the rear property line, and that's what we're we're showing on the, on the site plan tonight. Does that work, Eden? We can do that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Do you want to amend your? Uh, Request. I think I think we're okay. I think we have the right. Oh okay. no, for motion. Yes. yes. Go ahead. Okay. For motion. And, and, yes, and Cindy, we're going to remove the part about the 10 o'clock a.m. Okay. That's what he's requesting. Yes. Yes, I amend my motion for that, sir. Okay. The motion has been amended to encompass the wording. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Isnardi. All those in favor, say aye. 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 None opposed. Passes 4-0. Congratulations. 4B4, TNM United Corporation. This is for conditional use permit for Om Hermes' consumption of alcohol for a new Beef O'Brady's restaurant in Port St. John, west side of Curtis Boulevard. Mr. Ferraro? Yes. Good evening. My name is Carmine Ferraro, Carmel Development LLC. 3860 Curtis Boulevard, Cocoa, Florida. Commissioner Smith and fellow commissioners, I'm very excited about being here tonight to let you know that Port St. John is coming into its own. It's been a really long time, but uh, we are beginning to get the attraction and the uh, critical mass of national chain restaurants and businesses. We're very excited that Beef O'Bradius has chosen this location to serve Port St. John. And they are joining other chains as True Value Hardware and Dunkin' Donuts, who we keep very busy on a regular basis to get our coffee fix and our local hardware. We're asking you to tonight to support this so that Beef O'Brady's will have the ability to sell alcohol as part of their food service, which is part of their national chain's menu service. Just some quick points with regards to citizen participation. We mailed out to the same residents that received the notice within 500 feet held a citizens meeting prior to the PNZ. We had no attendance, emails, or calls regarding that. With relation to the PNZ hearing, we had unanimous approval by the PNZ board. 
with no negative board comments or public opposition. And with regards to the staff report, we met and exceed all of the requirements for the CUP, and there were no additional comments that were added by staff stating any deficiencies or clarifications requested by the applicant. So in conclusion, we would ask you tonight to grant this request for a CUP. Thank you, and I'll answer any questions if you have any of them. Anyone have any questions for Mr. Ferraro on the board? No. Thank you. You're welcome. Pleasure of the board. I move to approve this, and thank you for doing it. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett. Second. Uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Pritchett and a second by Commissioner Barfield. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4-0. Okay, 4B5, Douglas Jenkins. This includes a small scale plan amendment and a future to the change of future lands designation from residential one to two and a half to residential two, and a change of classification from AU to SR on 0 0.82 acres look on the east side of North Tropical Trail, uh, north of West Crystal Fully. This is a just, this is the dangerous uh, 90 degree turn right there at Sam's house. Um, I think it's very brave of Mr. Jenkins' son to want to put a house on this property, but that's what they're seeking to do, and I'm hoping that it will open up that corner and there'll be better visibility from now on. My name is Lance Jenkins. I'm speaking on behalf of Douglas Jenkins. Uh, just, just, just as she stated, I just, I'm just want the, uh, the approval to build uh, on the in .82 acres and, and uh, move, go from AU to, to SR for a single family home. And hopefully we have the resolve with the type of driveway we're going to put in or we'll be able to see both north and south. I'm available for any questions. Thank you. Anyone have any questions? I'm fine with it. Um, Cindy, we have to do two separate motions? Yes, please. Okay. First <coughs> one, I'm going to make, make a motion to approve the future land use to residential two. We have a motion by Commissioner Barfield. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Osnardi. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4-0. Okay, uh, next motion is to approve the zoning change from AU to SR. I make a motion we do that. We have a motion by Commissioner Barfield. Anyone second? Second. We have a second by Commissioner Pritchett. Anyone wish to vote no? Mm -hmm. Passes 4-0. And congratulations on your state championship. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Tell, tell them who you are so everybody knows. Oh, I'm just, I'm just the assistant football coach at Cocoa High School. No, that's, that, that's a the very honorable, <laughs> honorable and profession. 4B6, Florida Power and Light Company. This is the companion rezoning to the comp plan under uh, Agenda C. We're cleaning up this property. It was a bunch of old orange groves and surplus property, GU and AU and RR1, to the GMLU uh, designation, which stands for Government Managed Lands, and the U means utility. So therefore, they also need to have the conditional use permit for electric natural gas, water, wastewater utilities. Really what they're doing there is the solar farm, as you know. And this is just the zoning, the companion zoning to make sure that the project goes forward. I have some cards here. Um, Mr. Winston, would you like to speak? Come right on up. Thank you. I get to wear a couple of hats tonight. Keith Winston, Brevard Zoo. I just want to let you know that FPNL actually approached us quite a while ago about the larger sort of solar initiative they're doing besides the solar farm, which we wholly support and feel it's a great energy option for our community. They're working with the zoo. They've installed some solar trees there to just to try to get people thinking about the energy choices they make. And I'm thrilled to see this. It seems like great use of the land, um, very low impact on wildlife. Um, it's a good choice from our point of view, and I want to let you know they've really reached out to the community proactively again, you know, about it. So I'll just share that with you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Getchens, would you like to speak? Laura Lee, would you like to speak? Uh, thank you. Laura Lee Thompson, 3550 Irwin Avenue, Mims, Florida. 
Um, I think this is an ideal project for Bavard County because we're like the home of technology and um, right now that field is just a Brazilian pepper haven. Uh, I think that FPNL has done a good job with community outreach. They, they've got nice buffers next to the Barefoot Bay community. Uh, I think there was somebody that asked about gopher tortoises and uh, they're not not only will they not bother the gopher tortoises, I think they're going to create a gopher tortoise refugia there um, with the, the grass that's going to grow underneath the solar panel. So I uh, hope that you all would look favorably on this and give it a unanimous, unanimous vote. Thank you. And in full disclosure, Mr. Getchens took myself and my staff up to see the solar farm in, where was that, the Cape? Yeah, North Merritt Island. It was very impressive, and, and the one that you're going to build down in Mims is going to be even bigger. And I have solar panels on my house, so obviously I'm kind of a pro solar panel guy. And I will mention that my electric bill last month was 10 bucks. Just saying. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I, I need to declare also that I have spoken to Mr. Getchens about, about this. Duly noted. Absolutely. I, I have too. I've met with him and I, I talked to Mr. Scott on the phone yesterday also. Duly noted. And Mr. Getchens has been very busy because he's met with all of us. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it. I appreciate the information you provided. And thank you. Pleasure of the board. I move to approve. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion to approve by Commissioner Pritchett and a motion to, se to second by Commissioner Zanardi. Anyone? Wish to vote no. Passes 4 0. Congratulations. 4B7. This is another follow up companion rezoning to the 1.2 Princess Plan change. They're taking the property from PIP, BU1, RVP, and AU to the RU17 with a buying development plan that limits the property to 4 units per acre. They also have uh, committed to hooking up to uh, sewer and I can't remember, something like 193 homes is what they're aiming for on this property. Pleasure of the board. I move to approve. This is pretty easy. Okay. Just uh, I have a question. I, I guess we also have to put the uh, approve with the attached BDP? Yes, please. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, in your motion. Okay. How do you know to do that? Because he takes notes when he oh. takes direction from Cindy. Cindy didn't tell me that. I'm sorry. sorry. Yes, approved with the binding balance. Would you like plan to amend your I would. Okay. I'd like to amend my motion. Your motion is amended. Okay. We have a motion, an amended motion to approve by Commissioner Pritchett. A second? We have a second by Commissioner Osnardi. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4-0. Okay, last but not least, 4B8, Light Findings, LLC, Noonan, and Bish as Bishop of Diocese of Orlando. This is a change of classification from GU, BU1, BU2, IU, and IU1, all to RU17, also with a buying development plan limited to four units per acre, requiring the connection to water and sewer for the entire development on 130 acres. And this is on the, located on the north side of Camp Road. Pleasure of the board. What does, uh, excuse me, but the, the buffer, uh, what is the buffer requirements? Do we have to put that in there too? Uh, we, the buffering from uh, the railroad would be a typical 15 feet. That would be your code minimum. Okay. Well, I'll make a motion that we approve with uh, the buying development plan. Commissioner Barfield makes a motion to approve. Do we have a second? We have a second. S second by Commissioner Pritchett. Anyone wish to vote no? Passes 4 0. Thank you. That's all I have. <laughs> okay, moving into uh, board reports. We have no public comments. Mr. Abate. No reports. Ms. Bentley. 
No report. Commissioner Barfield. No report. Commissioner Znardi. No report. Commissioner Pritchett. No report. Commissioner Smith does have a report. I would like to just mention I got back uh, late yesterday after a four-day trip to Washington, D.C. with the EDC. We went up there with the purpose of what EDC does is economic development, try and bring businesses and jobs here. Um, I will report that uh, Lockheed is closing down their Sunnyvale uh, operation. They've been there for 62 years and they're bringing their uh, operation here to Brevard County along with 300 jobs and, and their complete uh, supervisory staff. So that's a big win for us. Um, there's no no new uh, word on the Battlefield Airman Training Center that I'm desperately working to get here. Um, one change has occurred. We were told uh, when we were there a month ago that the decision would probably be handed down uh, by middle to the end of May. Now they've decided that that will be towards the end of the summer because um, they're going to wait until the Secretary of the Air Force, the new Secretary of the Air Force is confirmed. So that will be forthcoming. But I will tell you um, and I, will, I am going to give a big shout out to General Monteith because he took it upon himself to fly up to D.C. and he escorted us through all eight meetings that we had on Tuesday and, and I can tell you that had a huge effect on the people that we were visiting including the assistant to the Secretary of the Air Force who was, uh, who's been keeping us up to date and um, keeping us apprised of what's going on with the Battlefield Airman Training Center. If you remember this would be huge for Patrick Air Force Base. It would bring in up to 1,200 jobs, new, new uh, 1,200 airmen, and a lot of new buildings. So, and it would also probably keep us off the BRAC list in 2019. And we also learned that there's going to be that's going to be called BRAC light. So that will be they're going to um, close out 5%. There's 23% of the bases now that are underutilized. BRAC light will. Close down 5%. We don't want that to be, we don't want Patrick to be one of those. So if we can get the BATC, we're pretty confident that that won't happen. And then they'll have a heavier uh, BRAC uh, base realignment closures, and that will be in 2021. So the, that's basically the news I've got from my three days, and it was very, very productive. I think it was the most productive that I've had in the three years I've been here. Commissioner Barfield. I just wanted to point out uh, General Monteith is the commander of the 45th Space Wing at Patrick Air Force Base over yes. the whole range. Yes. So and very important. That he they, was there. they also, yes, it, is, it was very important. And to, to highlight that even more, he was just, um, uh, what's the word, appointed or reapt, reapt re to, uh, to his third year in command of the 45th Space Wing. And I was told by numerous people in the Pentagon that that almost never happens. So this guy carries a lot of weight. So for him to be up there supporting us was huge. So we really appreciate that and want to have a big shout out to General Monteith. And with that, this meeting is adjourned. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.